Threw down the reins Standing at the gates Watching my secrets evaporate I had worry I had pain So I let them leave on a burning train Free man Free man can fight, fight for change We're fast enough for the passing lane So throw down fear, throw down the chains There are no prisoners out on the range Free man Hi, my name is Matt Anderson, and uh, I would call myself a roots and soul musician, I guess, if I get asked that question. Uh, I grew up with all kinds of influences, and um, that seems to be what's leaked itself most into my music. You know, I grew up on country, though, and lots of folk and uh, classic rock. But uh, after digging into blues a little bit, I started to kind of get into the soul music more, too, and um, that seems to be what's, what's risen to the top in the last few years for me, anyway. Free man. Speed the plow, get on the horse You take the darkest uncharted course I'll be the miracle you can't explain If it ain't magic, I'm gonna try again Try again, free man For me, I guess I first got into the blues the same way a lot of people did, listening to like Eric Clapton, B.B. King, you know, whatever my brothers had in their tape collection, really, the more mainstream stuff, and then kind of digging into that. And also, we're really fortunate at home. We border right on the States, so a lot of the people I have access to to listen to, they learn from the first generation blues guys. You know, they were down, learning stuff from Helen Wolf and, you know, all these, all these, uh, you know, Sonny and Terry and Ronnie McGee and... Um, so yeah, I, I'm a corner fortunate to play with people who have played with them. So it's almost like you know, <laughs> um, you know, through uh, you know six degrees of separation, we really weren't that far away from it. I've been in love a time or two, but all fades to gray when compared with you. Right from the start and all the way through. The easiest thing that I'll ever do What we got now It was all worth the wait I guess we've both made A couple mistakes They brought me to you So I won't take them back If you were my first love um, I've never seen it as a sad thing. I've always seen it more as a triumph, I guess, the blues. Um, and any, any time, anything you can do to help you get you through things, I think is a triumph. And that's, that's what the blues always seemed like to me. You know, it was never anybody, I think it gets labeled as people complaining or people whining or talking about hard times. But um, I always hear it as people dealing with hard times. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's another thing that really draws me to it. It's, it's not about the... Uh, it's not about the troubles, it's about getting through the troubles. In my old man's Capri, if I laid eyes on you when I was 22, I would have sold my guitar and bought a ring for you. But what we got now, it was all worth the wait. I find that, you know, as I've written, as I've gone on writing older, Getting older, I definitely start to incorporate more things that affect everybody, I think. Like I said, like when I was younger, you, I just didn't know those things didn't even concern me. I didn't worry about the world, you know. <laughs> I looked about this far in front of my face, and that was that's all you're concerned with when you're young. But um, as I've gotten older, I definitely, you know, those... Um, you can't ignore the things that are going on around, and um, you feel more passionate about them than I did when I was young. You know, when I was younger, I just, you know, I didn't look too far beyond myself, and... Um, you know, now that I've traveled the world more and just you, know, you meet more people and you see, you know, everything can be uh, 
because I had a, a pretty decent life, pretty easy. I didn't have a whole lot of struggle, and, uh, and there's a lot of people who have, so that's, um, that definitely affects you. And I think when you get older, you start to see those things and realize, you know, you can talk about them and you don't have to keep it to yourself, and it should be talked about. first love, you would have been my last. If you were my first love, you would have been my last. You're not my first love, but you're gonna be my last. Um, one of the tunes we wrote uh, with a guy named Craig Northy, and um, What Would Your Mama Say? And um, the whole idea behind that sparked after, I think it was a couple of years ago, they were having, having race riots. And um, in uh in the carolinas and um yeah people were actually going out and, and you know burning crosses again and, and doing all the you know and carrying torches and it was just um yeah it was you know when you feel like you're you're past that then you see it again and um you know when i was younger i didn't you know i didn't really see that you know at home i didn't pay attention to the news but now when you do see it and um yeah it's just it's just it's disheartening and sickening really and um and watching that stuff, you know, I was watching people say things, and all I could think is, you know, what would your mother say if she saw you saying something like that? You know, because that's a, that's a saying around home. So, you know, yeah, that's kept you in line, you know. You, your mother's going to hear about what you just said, so you'll be careful kind of thing. And um, that's what that's what the, was the driving idea behind that song. Keep a watch on the clock For the little hand to stop Striking a match just to watch it burn I don't want to lose this love Haven't we lost enough? A heart only takes so much Before it falls out of touch I just want to hold you close Don't want to let it go I'm going to love you like I've got something to prove I'm gonna love you Like I've got something to lose um, This album for me is really where I'm most at home, I, I think um, as far as musically and, and the writing and, and where I was at, you know, you know being my, my abilities and, and um, yeah, it, it, it felt really good. We didn't, um, this is the first album that I've never thought about the end result being accepted. You know, I've, I've always had a little bit of that, but there's always a little bit in your head of like, are people going to like this? Is, you know, is it going to get on radio and all that kind of stuff? And this time, uh, confident and also a good level of not caring, I think, a whole lot. And realizing you, you can worry about that and worrying about it doesn't make anything any better on an album. So, um, yeah, it feels great. You know, we went in the studio, did it live off the floor, which was the way I've wanted to do an album for a long time. Again, we had the horn players on the floor, hardly. The only thing we overdubbed was background vocals, so everything was, you know, was in one room, yeah. yeah. All the musicians playing together at the same time, so all my vocals are the vocals we laid down live, my guitar parts, all the solos pretty much were all uh, all done live, and that was, that was a great feeling, and all the songs were written with friends, you know, there was nobody I was trying to write a hit with, you know, I'd hang out with friends, have supper, write a song. You know, my friend did the album art, you know, so it, it was just... Um, yeah, it was making music and, and creating something with people that I really cared about, which was uh, which was really great, really freeing, and not worrying about what people think about it is probably the best part of that, really. on stage I try to make it as much like a visit with a good friend as I can I guess you know or like a good conversation good conversations for me are there's back and forth you know it's not just a musician playing and the audience listening I find that really boring and kind of uh, it, there's nothing to me too special about that but when 
musician plays, the audience listens and gives something back to the musician, and you can build on that all night, and that's when the that's when the magic happens. I kind of talked to this about in another interview with somebody, and um, it's almost like a, a mutual love of spirituality everybody kind of gets to. You know, it's a common place, and everybody wants to feel good when you leave a concert, and uh, I just try to create that. I like to tell stories, I like to have laughs, and just, just play music and have fun like I was in my kitchen back home. You can't be shy because people f get nervous for a shy person. So you've got to be, uh, you've got to be uh, open. You've got to be um, receptive to what an audience is going to give you too. But um, yeah, I, for me, when I'm playing my solo shows, especially the audience becomes a band member for me. That's where I get my energy is from them, not from another person on stage. I'm gonna love you like I've got something to lose. I'm gonna love you like I've got something to lose.